Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. AME theologian uh, James Cone, uh, many years ago, wrote a brilliant book, an insightful book, entitled The Cross and the Lynching Tree. Uh, in it, uh, he speaks of the dual blessing and pain of the cross. The cross can heal and it can hurt, he wrote. It can be empowering uh, and liberating, but also enslaving and oppressive. Um, there is no way in which the cross uh, can be uh, interpreted, no one way. He says, I believe that the cross placed alongside the lynching tree can help us to see Jesus in America in a new light uh, and thereby empower people who claim to follow him to take a stand against uh, white uh, supremacy and every kind of injustice. The gospel of Jesus, uh, Cone continued, is not a rational concept to be explained in a theory of salvation, but a story about God's presence in Jesus' solidarity with the oppressed, which led to his death on the cross, which is itself redemptive, uh, redemptive. Uh, and what is redemptive is the faith that God snatches victory out of defeat, life out of death, uh, he wrote, hope out of despair. Cohen is clear that there is no redemption in suffering for suffering's sake. Rather, what he helps us to see is that God has experienced suffering, and so our suffering, our pain, our fear, and even death are encapsulated in Jesus' suffering. And the imagination Cone offers us is solidarity. Solidarity with those who are oppressed in our day. Solidarity with those who experience injustice. And solidarity with those who are suffering. Solidarity, as our prayer book says, uh, and uh, a, a, a solidarity with Jesus and all those who in this, uh, as we pray, transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, or any other adversity. Cone is offering us specifically a vision of how the oppressed, the fearful and suffering, see the cross, and how Jesus' view from the cross encompasses the suffering of this world. This is not new. It is present in the theology of the cross preached by American Episcopal theologians like Fleming Rutledge or William Stringfellow, two great uh, lay theologians. We find it too in the work of Dietrich Bonhoeffer or René Girard and others. The, the author of our passage, for instance, today in 1 Peter uh, brings this theology of the cross forward. Uh, the author is not indifferent to suffering to injustice or powerlessness uh, of those who cannot seek justice, but instead fear for their lives. They seek to articulate God's and our solidarity with those who suffer. The author does something very important scripturally, theologically, pastorally, when they compare the suffering, the unjust suffering specifically, but indeed all who suffer with the suffering of Christ on his cross. By his wounds we are healed, First Peter uh, quotes the prophet Isaiah. Jesus' suffering on the cross is no mere historic fact, no theory of theology. Instead, the cross endures as a sign of solidarity with the oppressed and those who suffer any sickness or adversity. Bound neither by time or history, it is a signpost on our darkest hills. A gospel banner of grace in every hour of our needs, signaling the message that the instrument 
of disgrace and death is now a beacon of hope, uh, blossomed with the message of transformative resurrection. Jesus' suffering is the balm in Gilead we sing, the flowered thorny crown of our deliverance and the hailed festival day in face of an unjust world filled with the vestiges of racism and white supremacy, but truly filled with every kind of violence and suffering that we know, whether it be under the powers of enslavement that rob human beings from their personhood uh, or the demons of addiction who bind us, uh, of poverty that disempowers uh, people or a virus that confines us and brings us unexpected death. Peter proclaims faithfully without hesitation in the face of tremendous suffering that God has in the person of Jesus Christ suffered unjustly a death-bringing, human-breaking kind of suffering such that God knows our suffering that, that breaks a person, uh, suffering in slavery that breaks the will and oppression that breaks hope, the breaking of community through isolation and loneliness and the breaking of the body from cancers and illnesses. In Christ's humanity, such suffering is taken into the Godhead such that God knows the brokenness of heart and body and mind, whether that of a child, an adult, or the oldest among us, the vulnerable or the powerful. God redeems our brokenness, our frailty, our humanness through the cross and resurrection. And we learn to lift our eyes above the horizon of our present suffering. Paul writes in Romans, I consider the sufferings of this present time are nothing compared to the revelation with the revelation of our future hope. Yes, the creation groans, he writes, we groan, we ache, but hope comes in the morning. God lifts our eyes in a world of suffering, even in an unjust world, to a hope. A hope given to the people Israel to see beyond their present wilderness. A hope given to Esther uh, in Scripture to see beyond the present persecution. A hope for the first suffering Christians. It is a hope sung by Christians ever since and saints and sinners in every hour and at the bedside in the field and by the heart. Peter invites us to see that Jesus knows our suffering and comes as our shepherd. Through this time, uh, he comes. No mere bucolic image of a young man with puffy, unsoiled lambs, but, but the shepherd of the cross, the gate of the kingdom, where our personhood is guaranteed, where we are brothers and sisters united in one family, and where sibling rivalry, oppression of each other, is put to a final rest. A place where nothing can separate us from God's love. There is a place there that we will be taken. There's a place that neither weeping nor sighing shall be anymore. Where frailty and weakness and illness and even death do not have the last word. Peter is writing just such a, an offering, a pastoral letter in this moment accepts, he accepts the world uh, for what it is, a world of injustice and poverty and unfairness and illness and death. Uh, uh, but as a bulwark against such darkness, Peter invites us to courageously lift our eyes to the hills where our help comes from, from a shepherd of human and divine making who leads us upon mountaintops and through valleys, and to the cross, even to the grave, and after that, while death moans that another lost uh, body has been taken from it into life and into resurrection. Christ, our shepherd, the guardian of our souls, the watcher uh, in the night, uh, contends for us, uh, the one uh, who comes after us, 
Uh, we are being shepherded by no less than the great uh, shepherd of the cross of God's sheep through every injustice and every suffering, every kind that is imaginable, even now and in this present hour. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.